Because someone like Naeem Hines' injury, in that situation, so close to camp, just take us into your thought process of having to kind of change up whatever you have to on the fly, obviously without needing to go into detail who's playing where. Sure. Uh, first of all, it's sad for Naheem. Um, you know, you, you don't want that to happen to anybody. It doesn't matter the caliber of player. But you guys were able to witness some of the things he did last season uh, as a returner. And so that, that loss is tough. It's just like it is every year. You never know when injuries are going to happen. It doesn't matter the type of the injuries. So there's guys competing at that returner spot, punt returner, kick returner. And they'll compete during the course of... Uh, the entire camp and during the season, whether that's Khalil, uh, whether that's uh, Deontay, those guys will keep working and we'll we'll figure out that replacement for Naheem. Specifically Deontay's skill set and given what he was able to do when he was with New Orleans, how beneficial is that to have a guy with that skill set that could possibly come in and, and take that spot? Yeah, Deontay had a lot of success in New Orleans, uh, punt return especially earlier in his career, so it's exciting being able to work with him. And uh, uh, I, I think that it's always nice that somebody has NFL reps. So his comfort level at that position uh, is definitely a benefit. When you mentioned the NFL reps, he had a lot of success in college too. Do you go back and watch any of that when you're getting a guy like this? Or do you just strictly look at like what he's done at the league level? It really depends on how many NFL reps they have. So a guy that has fewer NFL reps, uh, then we may go back and look at college, depending on how long he's been in the league and how many reps he has. Uh, somebody like Deontay had so many, has had so many punt return reps uh, on Sunday afternoons that um, you wouldn't necessarily have to go back and, and reference the college. From a coaching standpoint, when you lose a guy like that at this stage, right, at the beginning of training camp or whatever, how does that alter your approach in terms of the time and the reps that you get during the course of these practices? Uh, it really doesn't alter the approach. Uh, as we look at roster, because uh, a 90-man roster right now is a 53-man roster, but really it's a 48 when you're thinking about who's getting a jersey on game day as uh, Bean and Coach McDermott develop that number. But you're constantly looking at, are guys ready to go? Where is it, where's it sorting out as far as depth chart goes? Injuries as they come and go, how's that working out? So you're, you're constantly... Uh, tweaking it as you go based on personnel, but it's not a major shift, even though uh, Naheem, obviously very good player, it's not a major shift as far as schematically what you're doing or rep count during practice or even how you're setting up practice. We talked to Sean some about this new fair catch rule and how that might, or Sean and Brandon, about how that it might impact things. Like from your perspective, your thoughts on that new rule, and then how does that impact when you're deciding on a returner, knowing that's a new factor for this season? Okay. There's a new rule? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, I really wanted to see if you'd follow up with that. Uh, the new rule is very similar to the college rule for yeah. kick return. So really what it is, you have the opportunity to fair catch any ball inside the 25, and it's a touchback. Ball's at the 25. So that will play a part of how we're figuring it out, um, whether Naheem was here or not, but just figuring out what the strategy is to work uh, with that new rule. Almost every year, every other year, there's usually a rule that comes up, a little bit of a, a tweak. A few years ago, uh, kickoff coverage was the static start, uh, the 5x5 five five, a few years before that, no wedge on kickoff returns. So there's, every year there's, there's tweaks to the rule book on special teams, and then it's just a matter of getting comfortable with them as a coaching staff and then making sure the players are comfortable with the rules and what it means and how it will affect our strategy. What's your thought? Uh, 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 as a special teams coach, do I hate that rule? I feel like that's a very inflammatory question. I mean, so, uh, there's no good way to answer it. No, I don't. Um, I would say, as a military guy, I got real good at tell me what the rules are, and I'll, I'll live by the rules. So the league has uh, put this rule in place and very good intent behind the rule, so it's my job to figure out what's the best way to follow the rule to the benefit of the Buffalo Bills. Yes, as, a, as, a, as a team that's been good on special teams, though, have a kicker that was able to get the ball to the goal line and go cover, it's got to be a detriment, I would think, in some way, to the good special teams team. Do you agree with that or no? Uh, I don't think it's a detriment because you're always trying to get better whatever the rules are. So it, so if you feel like you have an advantage on special teams, you still figure out it within the course of the rules how to take take most uh, most advantage of what you think is an asset to your team. Especially with kickoff coverage, though, it just seems that the NFL, and I understand the, the, the thought process behind it, but it 
but it's chipping away at anything that any team can do on uh, on, on kickoff returns. Do you wonder if they're ever going to just essentially almost eliminate that? Because that seems to be where the trend is going. Yeah, as a lifelong special teams coach, uh, my wife and kids are here at practice today, so any talk of me eventually being irrelevant, I'm going to go ahead and table that for a later date. Uh, no, there's always, there's the league is evolving, and uh, uh, I believe, as somebody that's uh, been front and center to the changes as they've happened, the intention is always very good for making sure that uh, the league puts the best product on the field uh, every Sunday afternoon, week in and week out. So it's, it's, it is not something that is discouraging to me. Uh, yeah, the biggest thing, probably the biggest change for me is anytime there's a team period that where the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator are calling plays, Coach McDermott is obviously calling the defense, and where in the past he had been the head official uh, slash coordinating the situation on the field, now that's, that's my role, and that's something that I started in the spring and now have done through the course of camp. It's very exciting for me because it gets me uh, a little bit back into offense and defense where uh, since college I hadn't really uh, been a part of that. Always in college, for the most part, it was an offensive position and special teams for me. And then in the NFL, my time in the NFL, it's just special teams. So it's been fun to be involved that way. Uh, the, the, some of, some, especially the specialists, do call that period the yell at smiley period because you're never going to never gonna please everybody in those situations. But it's been exciting, and I'm glad I get the opportunity to do it. And the, really the other great thing for us is Corey Harkey, our assistant, uh, he really gets more responsibility because he's got to pay attention to those special team situations as we're driving down the field. So it's been great having him interacting with uh, our three specialists. So, so it's been a real positive, I think. When you mentioned the excitement, was that a goal for you to get back into <laughs> some of the like, big picture stuff, or was it just kind of happened? Yeah, yeah. When coach told me I was going to do it, I said, "Are you sure?" He said, "Yes," and I said, "Okay, let's uh, let's go." So, no, it, it was not a goal. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, but it has been good uh, as I'm learning and getting back involved. For the continuity of all your specialists coming back this year, what does that mean to that group, both on the field and they obviously get along so well personally? Yep, yeah, Reed. Uh, Tyler and Sam, unbelievable group of three guys. I think this is the first time in my career in the NFL that I have had three guys that are veteran guys that are a solid unit going into the season. So there's not there's not a talk of competition. Uh, there's not a talk of um, you know kind of uh, looking for other options. These three guys are tremendous pros better human beings. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate to be able to work with those guys. You've used, you've used Micah Hyde in the past, a punt returner. What are the benefits that he provides there as far as a backup to that position and also weighing that against his role on defense, obviously? Yeah, uh, we have used Micah Hyde in the past. I would call that more of an emergency. So so he has the skill set because he's a tremendous athlete, uh, but I, I, would, I would deem him as a, an emergency returner depending on uh, what comes up and how things develop. Because of that continuity that he now has, Tyler having the same holder, you know, for that second straight year. Sure. For him, as he's, like, just preparing, is, what does that do for him, you know, and Sam now for a full season and being able to get in that rhythm, he had a lot of change at that spot. Yeah, and uh, Tyler's handled it unbelievable. You're right, he has had uh, a few different holders and guys he's worked with. Now, it helps that Sam is elite as a holder. Very good skill set, but also very good mental approach to the game. Uh, Sam can also kick as well as punt. So Sam's able to talk to Tyler after a kick, and there's times I'll go to Sam and say, hey, I think I saw this, and he'll say, yep, yep, me too. Okay, hey, Tyler, here's what we're thinking. But it's been a great uh, advantage for Tyler, and it's nice, even though Sam was here all last year, this is his first camp with us. So it's really nice to be able to gel like this at camp and work on some of the things that you would normally do going into a season that we didn't have the opportunity to last year. Because of the new kickoff rule, how also does that maybe impact what you do on kickoff team as far as thinking who you're keeping? I understand there are contractual, financial ramifications in anything you do, but that's also got to be a discussion, right, Coach? I think kickoff scheme is a bigger discussion. I don't know if kickoff 
roster with the change is as big just because it's the same guys covering punts. So it's the same guys covering punts and trying to block punts, and then obviously kickoffs and returns as they happen. Uh, so roster eventually is is Brandon and, and Coach McDermott's uh, responsibility anyway, and I and I'll uh, you know we all work together. But I see it as less of an impact just because it's those same guys that are depending on how many times you're punt or or trying to block a punt during the course of the game. It's those guys that are going to be out there. Matt, what do you see out of, out of, out of Bass? Um, entering his third year, he didn't have a sophomore slump or anything like that. What is it about this this young man that really has made him consistent for so long just as a young guy? He is a phenomenal talent, but probably more importantly, he has made sure he has the correct mindset when he first stepped in the building. So when he came here, it was the COVID year, and he was coming from Georgia Southern, smaller school, so potentially that would be a tough rookie season for him. And he came in, did great, hit big kicks in playoff games, but it's because of right away he was thinking, what is the appropriate mindset? How do I learn? How do I get better? Even uh, he kicked uh, our first training camp day, and he left that practice, and when I talked to him, he goes, boy, I learned so much today. And you wouldn't think of a guy has, that has had that much success not just ticking the boxes, but saying, holy cow, I really learned this, 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 and this. That's how you got to do it. And that's probably what's most impressive about it. Sure. It's really a good opportunity, uh, other guys to get reps. Tyler's been super involved in the meeting rooms, which is great. He's a great leader. He's a great teacher. Uh, he was able to get up and, and uh, talk to the guys about a few tips and tricks yesterday during one of the meetings. So very, very involved, and he'll he'll be back sooner than later. And I know they're working through that as as fast as appropriate. But uh, yeah, he's he's still been very involved, and he, he's he's another guy that has a ton of experience and is a is a great person. Oh, Reed, Fer back, Reed Ferguson in the back. Uh, for yeah, first uh, first of all, I feel like you should be warming up right now. <laughs> I wanted to get my question in. Yep, go ahead. Uh, cover any long-time mistakes you might have uh, in the plan for the season. Okay, great question. Uh, what are the Okay, great question. If you couldn't hear that, uh, Reed asked long snapper fakes. We do have one that's called Traeger. Traeger. Um, <laughs> Reed feels like he can really get his brand up if we do more grilling with Reed. So any any fakes we do this year will be 100% backyard grilling related. Did you practice that? Yeah, and scene. <laughs> you guys got anything else? Thanks. Okay, appreciate you.